Hey guys, welcome back and girls to another video. I'm here at CSI headquarters and I am, what we're going to do is challenge and more specifically, I'm going to challenge Tom. So I'm getting a certain amount of pushback, which I actually do not care about like my involvement with CSI. And a few of you said like, oh wow, now it's just become one endless commercial for CSI. <laughs> well, okay, there's so many ways I could address that. The point is, is I'm uh, in my family life, one of the things I, uh, one of my terms that I like to use is result don't lie. The problem is, is you can't be here with us. So we've got Sean, a blue tech mobile detailing behind the camera today, and I've got Tom here. And so in your behalf, which is what I did before I dropped my hard earned money into this company, so I already knew that the, that the results can be delivered because I was using it out in the real world. But you can't do that. So you're on the fence perhaps. It's like, wow, okay, Darren, like he's always led me in the right direction, but now he's making some bold claims. So what I want to do is do my best to capture the results and say, okay, the results don't lie. Either Tom, you can do it or you can't. So, you actually started with the whole single product system, which is what you wanted to lead with. And, but, but then the, the essence of this video is where I come in and say, okay, Tom, compelling argument. Let's see what you can do, and I want to take it to the extreme. So before we take it to the extreme, because we're going to take it to the extreme by removing 600 grit sandy marks and finishing down to a swirl free finish. But you kind of went into this whole, we are the only, and by we, I'm not necessarily saying me, but you, what you develop. Well, so, you and I, now. Now. <laughs> so with that said is, what was your talk track of like, hey, we are the only single polished system out there? Yeah. Um, good intro. Good intro. <laughs> um, so the, the idea of single product polishing stems not from having a single product plus having 50 other products, but from having only one product. Hence, single. Single is product. One. <laughs> as far as I know, we are the only company in the world promoting one single product for polishing paint. I don't know anybody else. I, you know, they all say they okay, have. Let's clarify version. that. Okay, they, they, so I want to clarify that for my viewers because there's going to be people out there saying, well, no, this company has a single product, mm -hmm. a single polish, compound, polish, whatever. It's like, no, what they have is a version of that, yes. and then 5, 10, 15 other yes. types of polishes exactly. and compounds. Yes. So you're saying the only company in the world that truly has just that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Not that or a version of that with 5, 10, 15 other choices. You know in business they always say don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, yes. in the restoration trade, I put all my eggs in one basket. Yes. I said I don't want to do production, my dad was mad at me, you're crazy, you'll never make any money. We went on to make a lot of money in the restoration trade. We only did super, super high-end restoration work. When I got into this, I did it just to clarify. This. The money. We're not talking ten, twenty thousand dollar paint jobs. No, you're talking a hundred thousand plus paint jobs. And that doesn't mean I make a lot of money. I spend a lot. Of money. Yeah. You know, these paint jobs. I mean, that's a whole, whole another video. And that, that one that, but one that's what you're charging. That was a half a million dollars just for the restoration paint job. Half, half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. By the time you take it all apart, put it all back together, it's a half a million dollars. And that car was fully restored when it came to me. Yeah. Fully restored car. Take it all apart, strip the bare metal, and build it back up so you know it's as good as it can be. So money isn't really an issue when you're dealing with those kind of people. Quality is is what is right. most important. The same with this. It shouldn't be, I mean for me, as a body shop owner, before I got involved in this, there was no answer. Well try this. Oh, you must have done something wrong. Well, Come here and fix it then, right. Mr. Whoever Company, fix yes. my problem. They couldn't fix the problem. They, they couldn't ever guarantee me that you know, we could get these kind of, We, as a company, guarantee these results if you do it our way with one single problem. It's not confusing. 
We're not going to put 50 different products in there. We're going to do it. And, and, you know, just like this demo. And this is the only demo anybody wants to see. This hood is the hood, if anybody remembers. This is the hood from the Tamco booth. Tammy said, come on in, Tom, do demos at SEMA Okay, last year. a lot of my viewers have no idea when you say Tamco, what the heck does that mean? Look a little history. Tamco here. Paint. So Tamco Paint. Yeah, she, she's, she's an easy find awesome on paints. Instagram. Yeah. Does she have a YouTube channel? I think she does. Okay. Yeah, definitely. But big Instagram. On Facebook. Big, oh, on big on Facebook. Yeah, so big Tamco, Tamco Paint. Okay. So this now is, this year, SEMA said, Tom, you're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> You're not allowed to demo in the Tamco booth anymore. You have to get your own booth. So we went and got our own booth, and we will be there. And you know, um, so if you guys want to come see us, what hall? West Wing, West West Gate, I believe. Sixteen O Twenty Seven. The only demo that anybody ever wants to see yeah. is six hundred group. Yeah, they don't care about anything else. Now, as a boy, well, that's all we had. We only had six hundred group. Now, now you had talking. you had more coarse grips. Oh, yeah. But you only have the this. capacity to finish with 600 grit. That's and okay. just to clarify, in case you're a total newbie, in my world as a professional detailer, when I'm doing high, what I call high level paint correction, I'm never going to touch a car with 600 grit. Yeah. Never. Ever, ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever. The lowest I will even go will be 1,000 grit. Yeah. Okay? There might be a couple guys out there that might go down to 800 grit. But I'm willing to bet that they don't exist. Not on what I what's called OE paint, because that's what I deal with as a rule is original equipment paint, which already starts out with very thin clear coat. So 600 grit, I wouldn't even allow it in my van. There's no way. So 600 grit, that's what you're going to start. 600 grit, and that's if we can prove that we can remove the scratches and take it to swirl free. At least in 99% of the people who, who aren't just there to argue, they go, okay, all right, you just solved my big problem. Because number one, I'm not going to use 600 grit. I'm going to use two, three, four, five, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to use some really high grade sandpaper. And of course, I'm going to polish it right out. And we're going to do it right here. Um, you know, there's some guy at the end of the Tamco booth uh, at SEMA just went crazy because he, these guys are such good artists. He just go over, we're going to take it all down. This, this hood will be re-prepped for uh, SEMA, which is in a few weeks now. So we'll get the hood all ready. And this will be the hood that will be in the SEMA booth. So definitely come out and see us. And uh, if you want to see the 600 grit demo, yeah, we'll even Why? let you up. Yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> so this. Just to apply more context, because a lot of guys, and I get it, I would be very cynical if I wasn't me and I'm watching my channel, and now Darren's suddenly involved with CSI, and now I just become your fanboy, which is what, as a YouTuber, you collect fanboys. And the fanboys come in and they defend you. And then the other people attack the fanboys and say, you're just a fanboy. You would eat up anything that that guy delivers because you're his fanboy. So that's the point, is like, in your behalf, I'm challenging Tom because I've already been through this. I've already been through this, ref what I call the refining process of like, hey, okay, Tom, I've been using your products over 15 years. I love them. But now it's like, okay, Darren, and you didn't even approach me. I'm the one who approached you. And it's like, Tom, I want to be part of this. And I've got, meaning it's not just talk. I've got some money. And what's the saying? Like, put your money where your mouth is, dude. You can talk all day long. But until you're ready to pony up that money, well, that's what I did is I ponied up the money because this is the stuff. This is like, damn, okay, I want to be part of that because single, it, it answers so many problems and it makes it so simple and it really is the answer. So I'm challenging Tom in your guys' behalf because I've already seen this. I want you guys to see it. So with that said, is Tom, okay. you take over. So we have 600 grit. Okay. So Tom, you just in because I want to just keep this as clear. I don't want them thinking we're doing some like big switch. Like yeah. oh, here I oh, just okay. I just slipped in yeah. some 1200 grit. Yeah. So you have that. Grit. Yeah. So you have the 600 grit in okay. your hand. So if you're not familiar with color sanding, um, you know, we always recommend trifold. 
Now we've got a whole bunch of different sides to use as you wear out this paper. But in the body shop industry, that's how we did it. You know, just nice trifold piece of sandpaper. Use water. So this is the hood we used at the Tamka booth last year. Um, thank you, Tammy, for allowing us to be in there. Uh, we've got a bunch of pinstriping on there that one of the artists kind of went crazy on here. We're going to take off this pinstriping with 600 grit that's been dried on there for a year because this hood has to be prepped and re-ready for SEMA now uh, in the next week or so. So 600 grit sandpaper, you know, like we talked about. Use water. Now, I'm going to be talking while you're working, sure, Tom, sure. because uh, there's going to be people who be like, wow, how come he's not using a block? Well, that's a whole nother series of videos which comes into sanding techniques uh, based on the car you're working on. Yeah, we're just kind of the hood. <laughs> yeah, right. we're, just, we're just blazing through this just to introduce some very aggressive sanding marks and in this moment simultaneously removing the uh, pinstriping on it so that we have a nice black, because it's a black paint job, non-metallic, which is as hard as it gets, FYI. If you're a beginner, even a pearl or a metallic, you can call it whatever you want, black paint is still easier to deal with than just a solid non-metallic black paint. Black paint, I, I don't know if anyone would have a counter opinion that it is the hardest the hard. to get right. Yep. So this is a non-metallic black paint, you're removing the uh, pit striping so that we get a nice fresh 600 grit scratch pattern. And since you're still working, I'm gonna keep talking. So you talk about a uniform scratch pattern. You, so what you're doing is you're creating the depth of all those scratches uniformly to the level of 600 grit. Yes. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Okay. You notice I only went in one direction. That way when we buff it, we can tell where the 600 grit scratches are. I hate it when somebody's, oh my gosh, going in a circular motion with sandpaper, because how are you going to be able to see that scratch pattern compared to what the buffer's putting in? Okay, you know, it's ironic. I just shot this video where I'm debunking that myth because all these YouTube detailers talk about never do anything in a circular pattern because circular scratches are harder to remove than vertical or horizontal. Yeah. I, now, is there any truth to that? No. Because no. what I explained is that it has nothing to do with the yeah. pattern. Nothing. It has everything to do with the depth of the scratch yeah. or the hardness of the clear coat, which would be the big, the two biggest determinants. And but you're area, just doing just it so I can see it. Exactly. Yeah. So you're doing it so you can actually see a contrast between the scratch pattern versus the buffing marks that we'll be introducing in the process of going to a score free finish. I don't know how many minutes that was, but you know that's live. We're making a mess here. Well, I can tell you is uh, just a little over three minutes. Oh, good. So yeah. three minutes to sand off year-old pinstriping. That was which I there. felt that pinstripe. <laughs> there was a ridge to it, meaning yeah. it's not thin paint. No. He no. definitely went in very aggressively and applied plenty of pinstripe paint. This is me test. This is me literally challenging Tom. Like, I dare you, Tom. I dare, I double dog dare you yeah, yeah, yeah. to right. remove 600 grit sanding marks. So now, right in the middle of that, you know, 600 grit mess that we've got in the center of this hood, on an aluminum hood, this is an aluminum oh, hood. it is, I did not yeah, know this that. this is an aluminum hood. The danger with aluminum is it'll start to pop if you get it too hot. Okay, define pop. Um, it expands and contracts. Right, um, so. It'll actually warp. That's okay, and aluminum hood will always go back to, to what it was. So I'm going to hold this rack down because that is going to be, this rack's going to, I'm going to put a lot of pressure on here. I'm going to take out 600 grit as fast as I can. We've got the Milwaukee buffer, yes. that's a big battery. Thank you, 9 thank you, Milwaukee. Thank you, Milwaukee. You Milwaukee. You guys rock. <laughs> and by the way, we love your buffer. We love it. And we are not getting paid to yeah, endorse no Milwaukee, not. just FYI. Put the product on the pad. This is our non-linting wool pad. Non-linting. Hold just it right here. Product. Don't move it around. I see everybody move it. Don't do that. It, no need to do that. 
inject it up into the pad. Now it's in the pad. Now, put some pressure. cornrows look like because I can look at a panel that's been uh, wet sanded yeah. and then buffed but they're still little tiny rows yeah. and I never had a term for it yeah, but so you in the industry sure you call that cornrows. Yeah, just cornrows. Now we've got a swirl mark. I mean there's going to be swirls here. Oh yeah. Look at those swirls. Okay, you hold that because I want to zoom no, in. No cornrows. There's no cornrows in there. Obviously, we've got sand scratches here where I didn't buff. Sand scratches here where I didn't buff. No sand scratches here. We've got a rotational mark from the buffer. You've got, you know, a serious doll. swirl marks. Yeah, serious yes. swirl marks. Or buffer trails, holograms. Yep. There's different uh, labels that they will attach to that unwanted effect right now. And if we were at SEMA, I'd want you to you know, pull out your light. This is a thousand lumen light. So this is the really significant. Yes, significant <laughs> light. We want to be able to see everything. So now we got out everything we wanted with the wool pad. Fairly fast. Uh, I would say it was fast. Now Way going. faster than I thought, by the way. <laughs> Honestly. And I put my back. Because I do, I do not, in my professional world, I never have to remove no. 600 grit sanding marks. <laughs> No. And, it, and I am really pushing hard. I yes. am. But the hood didn't work. We didn't, it was popping a little bit, but nothing bad. There's, you know, hood's not damaged. This is our foam pad. This is the only foam pad we sell for finishing. For finishing, clarify, because we also have a, a maroon pad for cutting. Yep. Yes. So this is finishing. Yep. You're going directly from wool to a finishing pad, yep. and you are not changing the product. Yep. As in, that is still the ceramics. Still ceramics. You know, this is the ceramics. You just put it in a ball and make it a little easier. A little bit right on the center. Obviously, you don't need to go that fast. Slow it down. About a thousand RPM. controlling one of the very few things that you have absolute control over. Yes. Because you can't control how hard the clear coat is that you're working on. Obviously you can control the sand paper that you decide to start with or finish with. So there's certain things that you can control, but the point is, is there's still a lot of moving parts. So you can't control how much exact heat build up, builds up in that process. You can't control it in the respect that you can back off the pressure, you can back off the duration, so you can finesse the heat build up to a degree, but you can't, you can't speak to it and say, hey, Hood, I want you to only heat up 15 degrees in the process of doing this. You can't do that. So that's what's cool about the single polish is that that is, not only has it made it super, super simple with one polish, but now you have control of that, but there's still a lot of moving variables, which is what you're talking about right now, is you want it to cool down because you have heated it up, there's been some expansion. So now we put the light on. 
just uh, put the light right there in the center and just make sure that it looks as good as possible. You, you, the only bummer is with the light that it does create, it does change the color. And when you start studying light, uh, like lumens, like 5,000 versus 1,000, um, like when you go to Home Depot and buy light bulbs, it's like, do you want your, your room that you're lighting up to look like a surgeon's room? Or do you want to look more warm, where there's a warm kind of brownish mm -hmm. kind of, so it does change things. But that gloss right now in this camera lens, it's like, damn, it's impressive. I wonder if you pulled out a yardstick. Would this be appropriate for a yardstick kind of moment just to kind of show that that's, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the Corvette guys this morning. You guys that are watching this in YouTube land, sorry for all this banter back and forth, but I'm trying to keep this as like candid and live as possible. So you just finished that to what you and I have determined is swirl free finish. Yes. And what I want to do is uh, hold up the light, Tom, because this, you know, of course we got to pull out the light because of course it's going to look swirl free. So there we have, and. You know, the light's going to move the light around because I want to, yeah, so you can obviously see the haze around where you did not finish. So right in the very middle, you know, and pull back, yeah, pull up, pull back. So there's still going to be like, I don't know what to call it, a starburst type of pattern around the edges because you did not finish uh, around the edges, the peripheral, like you did at the very center, exactly. So that's where some guy out in YouTube world is going to be like, oh no, I see some starburst, I see some hologram, I see something. Now think about what we could do with a DA from here. Yes. You know. But also what I want to clarify though is that this challenge is the ability to remove 600 grit down to swirl free finish. So you can have a guy with a highly trained eye that will come in right now and he would say, okay, I can still see something. It's like, well, guess what? I could play that game all day long. And this now comes to, like in the body shop world, you call this deliverable results. Absolutely. And this is actually way past body shop this deliverable is, results. You're deliverable here. I mean, you're way past you're that. Way, you don't have a swirl mark. Yes. There, okay, there's, you there's might a have a towel mark. A, you, right, which is you different. Have a swirl mark. Yes. So this is where a detailer could scrutinize this video and say, oh no, that's, that, that, they didn't meet the challenge. It's like, okay, this is where time is money. And this is where you have a conversation with your customer as to, okay, what level of results are you trying to achieve? Because in this, right now, I know if we pull this in the sun, that everyone would wet themselves. I would line up a thousand this people. This is a thousand women. Yeah. This is, this is bright. And I would, I, 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 know that those thousand people would stand in awe and be like, "Oh my gosh, how is this possible to see one?" But me as a detailer with 30 plus years of experience, I can always find ways to scrutinize anything. All I have to do is bust out the right light, come into the right angle, something. I can throw a wrench into the gear somehow. Yeah, especially if we're trying to charge more money to the customer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I can make it better. I can make it better. Yeah, I can spend yeah. more in your money. Yeah. yeah, so the point, part of the point I want to illustrate is the fact that this is you as a detailer. Let's say this is your world. Obviously, I'm challenging Tom, so I'm hoping that I'm making a very compelling case here. Of like, wow, Tom, that's that's a pretty bold statement. Um, let's see if you can do it. So to me, you, you hands down have proved it. Secondly, if I'm a detailer, I can scrutinize anyone's work and always find something if I'm trying to sell Johnny customer on using me instead of the other guy. So that's where it's like, okay, fine. Go back in 10 more times. But guess what? You can still use the same polish, the same pad, and maybe you want to reduce the speed even further. Maybe you want to reduce the pressure even more, but you want to now polish it and jewel it, because that's one of the, the words of the industry now is like, ooh, jeweling the paint. Fine, if you've got two hours to jewel that and, and to the point of what you consider absolute, absolute perfection, then by all means do it. The but, cool thing is you can scratch this so easy right now. This yes. is virgin yes. paint. I run my finger across there 
I just scratch. You just introduce scratch. And I just scratch right. it with my finger. So the next time your buddy or some ignorant chick, and this is not me disparaging chicks in general, but they come up to your car and say, wow, your car is dirty, and then they swipe it with their finger, yeah. and you're like, ah, don't touch my car that way. You will scratch it. Uh, anyhow, so that is, let me, let me pull this back, because I'm going to get back on camera with you. Now, do you want to measure with the tape measure? Uh, see if we can measure it? Well, really, because we, Tom and I had this conversation. We had a customer that showed up today, and he's got a, like a two-year-old vet. So we had this customer showed up. We want to remove the orange peel. We have to have the discussions like, dude, what you have to understand is that the, the thickness of your clear coat will define, largely determine how much UV protection is it. So as we uh, sand it away and polish it away, guess what? Now you now we reduce that clear coat down to a point where you have to accept that this car really has to remain in the garage most of the time. So we have this whole conversation with them. But what you did is you were clarifying for him that not all orange peel is created and specifically created on his car. So we can look at a part of his fender and say, okay, that's got some bad orange peel, but hey, Johnny customer, check this out. Down here, look how much orange peel, and you did this little temp test with him, you're like, look at, my, look at the reflection of my hand. You see how you can literally see the wrinkles in my hand right here? Because there's very little orange peel. But then when I drop it down here, suddenly you, you, you lose the ability because now the image, the reflection has become so distorted because of the orange peel that you can't make out the same detail. I would have to put my hand closer in order to see the same wrinkles on my hand that I can up here. And that's where you bring out a tape measure and you say, okay, let's see how far away. I don't know if we can pick this up on the camera. Yeah, I don't know. For example, so you can, I can, if you're the light, yeah. So you can read back. How I mean, far? Reading back, we're definitely reading back 12 inches to here. But it would, just to clarify, when you say read back, but we're looking at the reflection, reflection not the tape. You're looking at the reflection because yeah. the further away you go, the more it's going to reveal any form of distortion. Yeah. So how far so back? You can really see here. You can see the, the one, two, three, four, in the reflection. In the reflection. And then, you know, you're getting to 12 inches. It's, you can still see 12 inches. 13, 14, 15, it starts getting a little difficult for me to see. And now you just got to bust out my glass because on, you, know, you and I are old. I'd work. say, you know, 15 inches back um, on a 600 grit. Yeah. Never mind if you graduate. Let's say you started out with 1,500 grit. You went to 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, and now what company is it? 3M that has like 10,000 grit or 8,000? 8, 8, what is it? 8,000? 8, How much you want to bet they're going to come out with 10,000 grit? <laughs> I mean, that's absurd. I don't know about you guys. In fact, I would like to hear comments about that alone. In case you haven't heard, 3M has 8,000 grit. I know if you did 3,000 grit, I could sit here with my finger and start creating a shine at 3,000 grit. So at 5,000 grit, to me it's just like, why do I need 5,000 grit? You just use a single polish, two pads, and you remove 600 grit to this level. It's like, okay, simple and the answer. It's that simple. Not to be overly redundant. <laughs> Anyhow, so how about this for a challenge? How about if any guy out there, because I get all kinds of comments. People talk about the chemistry. It's like, oh, all compounds are, they're, they're all the same anyway. All pol they're all the same anyways. It's more about technique. It's about your pads, your technique. I can, I can do this with any compound. So there's a challenge. You bring your compound, da compound down or your polish, whatever it is your favorite is, and let's see you remove 600 grit sanding marks and do exactly what we did. And you can take as long as you want. And let's see if you can even do it for one. And then secondly, let's say they can do it. Now we're gonna do a time test. Now we'll say, okay, uh, and that took you four hours to do it. Okay, hope you got four hours and I hope you're charging for it. But I know I don't. Okay, I don't wanna spend four hours. Let's see how long it takes you to actually produce those kinds of results. 
So that will be my challenge. Like literally anyone, reach out. You can you reach out through Sean, reach out through me. I'm pretty accessible. Mm -hmm. And and through me, my phone number's up there. <laughs> so come on down and bring the challenge. So with that said, is there anything else you want to add? Nope. We'll be at SEMA. Yep. Come um, and see us. Yeah. Uh, I hope this is me showing you guys like, okay, I'm not just gonna like, you know, give Tom some money and then now suddenly I'm Tom's fanboy because I want you to buy the products. Like, this is the stuff that I went through. It's like, okay, I'm already convinced Tom because I've been using your stuff, but now I wanna see like, okay, I wanna like take it kind of to the extreme. Can it perform at an extreme level? Because I know I'm not, I'm not trying to work at this level. I'm working at a much less of an extreme. So if it could produce these kinds of results, sign me up, which is exactly what I did. Okay, leave your comments below. By all means, give it a thumbs up. And by all means, share this. I want to stir, I want to like bat the beehive with this one. So with that said, we will see you guys on the next video.